We've all watched the uh, Rio Olympics and followed the athletes' journeys to the podium. But what happens after the games are over? Olympic silver medalist Christine, uh, Krista, that is, uh, Galoin joins us this morning with some insight from her new book, Beyond the Finish Line. What happens when the endorphins fade? Uh, mm -hmm. So first off, for athletes, it's, it's reaching a dream. And so there's a lot of energy and focus goes on just making that dream. Mm -hmm. And then once you get to that dream and you have that dream, that's when everything, you go into depression. That's what happened to yourself. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like a definite little bit of a slump after, like anything. I mean, even after finishing the book, it's right after I crossed the finish line, what next? And I didn't know the answer, and not knowing the answer was a super um, uncomfortable feeling for me. And I had been so, you know, set in what I was doing for the previous eight years, really, because I trained for Beijing as well, you know, 11 years if you add it up. And all of a sudden, it's like, I don't have that anymore. So sharing your experience, is, is the hope that you're going to be helping other athletes right now going through the same thing or other people just going through this in any phase of their life? Yeah, I think I, I, it's important for me to give back and I knew that in writing through this you know, part of my life I would have something that a conversation would start um, that I kind of felt was already starting and it would either, it, would help, it helped me so it already has done its job in that sense but then I thought others might find it either entertaining or comforting to hear that this, these feelings were happening for me, they're happening for them, and then therefore kind of create a sense of community around the, the feelings of transition. How did you work through these feelings? How did, how did you get out of that little funk? I think, it, you know, really it's just kind of time and patience. I think I'm still in it sometimes, you know, watching the closing ceremonies last night, I kind of you know, was wide awake after laying in bed, like, what am I doing with my life? And I still am feeling it, you know, I four years later, so I don't think there's any, there's no rush getting out of it. There's right. no way out of it quick. So once an athlete, always an athlete, and you feel so related to those athletes that went through that experience. Oh, for sure. It's it's an unforgettable experience, and it's it leaves a big imprint on your life. It doesn't, it's not something you can just shelf. When we were talking how this is relatable, not just for athletes, but it's for other people that either maybe go to retirement, mm -hmm. or they've reached a goal, their dream, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, what happens after that dream? Yeah, I think to watching the Olympics, we get so attached to athletes and we see them and we really get in for those, you know, for the last two weeks, we've got to know our athletes. And so for anyone experiencing transition, it might be a, um, a really approachable way to say, for example, read about this. So say, for example, you're, you just got divorced. You might not want to read about someone else's messy divorce, but to read it from an athlete's perspective might be kind of approachable and comfortable and mm -hmm. yeah. And athletes are all just regular people. Right. Yeah. So tell me about the Olympics that just went past here in Rio. Uh, what was one of your highlight moments watching for yourself? Oh, I think for me, I had done a little bit of work with the women's rugby team, and I knew that women's rugby was kind of, you know, buzzworthy go going in, and that Canada was likely going to fall in love with the sport and those women. And it came to fruition exactly as I visualized it. It was so exciting to watch. Like, I just was, that's such an intense sport. It's so fast and just super entertaining. Um, overall, I think our athletes crushed it, As whether it was performance. athletes crushed yeah, it. Yeah, or, or just classy interviews and the way that we handled things, good or bad, it was just top notch. And not to mention all the firsts, all the repeats, all the history broken. Like, you just heard every single day there was something new and exciting happening. So I see you working with the Olympics still in the future. I see you working with the teams in the future. I'm pretty attached to it. Yeah. yeah. I've, like, if I set the goal, I want to I be in Tokyo. Maybe I'll set it now, four years out. I'm still living in quadrennials, apparently, so. Yeah. Well, we're going to watch for you. So once again, it's called Beyond the Finish Line. It's sold everywhere where books are sold, or you can reach out to us on our website here, and we'll help you with that as well. So thank you very much for coming this morning. Thank you. And to a golden life. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a break now from Breakfast Television. So much more to come.